There are different steps in the evidence-informed decision-making process, such as understanding what is evidence, um, understanding how to better utilise M&E data, understanding how to access evidence from different sources, how to assess the quality, how to synthesise and make sense of the different evidence, and how to integrate it into decision-making. In Malawi in 2015, UJBQ works specifically with the District Monitoring and Evaluation Coordinating Committees, or DMECs, that consists of the m and &E officers, or Monitoring and Evaluation Officers, of the different sectors in the district. The DMEC members attended workshops on these different steps in the EIDM cycle. They were then asked to identify individual cases in their sectors and were mentored individually on these. Some of the sectors identified included agriculture, health, education and labour. An example of the case in Chisi is the health sector who is focusing on lack of pregnant women attending antenatal clinics and in Mchinji district the adaptation of new technologies in the fishery sector to improve fish production. The case study uh uh, is based on uh, getting uh, evidence-based information uh, so that we can use it uh, for policy makers. Uh, this will be done at uh, district level and also at national level. Uh, we want to find out more uh, what uh, affects uh, uh, the women in, here in Chisi uh, not to attend uh, ANC in the first trimester. Some women were just uh, staying uh, at the community, not attending the ANC uh, at the hospitals. Before the mentorship, I did not uh, visit any, uh, any area to get the information, but after the mentorship, uh, I visited uh, some of the areas, uh, Kui, uh, which was doing better in ANC, and uh, Ntondo, which was the least. So I interviewed uh, uh, women, pregnant women, uh, to find out more on uh, uh, how they are doing in uh, ANC, uh, also uh, village headmen and uh, uh, health workers at, uh, at the district hospital. Uh, also I went to uh, Ntondo, uh, there I also met uh, the village headmen and I gathered uh, the evidence uh, and to find out the variations uh, between the two areas. The, the case study that I'm to present is about the decline in fish production due to climate change and low adaptation of new technologies. This is a Nyoka fish farm. Yeah, whereby we had a project financed by government. This pond, it was a, used as a reservoir. We were having water throughout the year. There was water everywhere. So we thought it wise to uh, establish this project down here. But uh, as you can see, we don't have even a, uh, a single fish inside this pond. Why? Water has evaporated because we had a drought, uh, just 2014, 2015 farming season. We had erratic rain. So uh, the water table has gone down and uh, due to scorching suns, what has evaporated. So in this case, BQ has helped us to identify challenges. One of the challenges is the uh, uh, effects of climate change, which has facilitated the lower level of water and evaporation. So we are coming with a approach whereby we deepen the ponds so that they should keep water throughout the year. The other one is uh, applying integrated aquaculture agriculture whereby agricultural activities and fish farming can go together in the sense that if a fish farming fails then we get something out of uh, agricultural products whereby we're saying we'll be planting banana around the what the, the fish ponds meaning we say we can get something out of banana as you're waiting to get uh, things from the, the the pond and these bananas will help to shed uh, fish ponds whereby uh, the rate of uh, evaporation will be slowed down. Be cure have pumped in their knowledge and wisdom to mentor us things that we didn't knew, things that we, we were um, uh, overlooking but uh, that are useful. We are now mentored to have uh, the capacity uh, to collect data, 
how to use evidence so that our policy makers can make policy based on the, the information that we have collected so that the policies that are coming in will be evidence based, that can sort issues uh, on the ground.